Christ Palace International Ministries. Some of the devils fighting you, they are dwarf devils. If only you speak in tongues and grow, the devils will recognize you and just run away. They will just run fast. What are you going to do? You are going to practice speaking in tongues. I think I tried to answer some few questions for you. So if you don't speak in tongues, as we pray, now tongue speaking, in the same, in the wrong spirit, you get everything by faith. Right now, I can call people and people will born again. Would they fast and pray? No. Now, if salvation, which is bigger miracle, people can get it in an instant. Why do you think we have to fast 40 days before we get tongues? Because it's all by faith. We might not lay hands upon you as we pray. Release your faith. If you are born again, say, Father, I receive the gift of tongues. I didn't have time to. Someone said that. Is it not the same thing we are saying? Mama, mama, mama. It's not the same. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. King of Kings, we magnify you. Oh, Thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for your glorious arm. Thank you for your righteousness, Jesus. Oh, Kahali Augustus. Kimahangele Kugazadas. Come on, hand the biggest attack. Come on, na 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 na. I have a lover here. And today I'm talking about the signs of growth. When you are growing, the signs to look for, and when you are not growing, the signs to look out for. So the first thing you want to understand is that God will give you a shepherd. The reason God will give you a shepherd is because we are the sheep of God. The church of God is called the flock of God. Acts 20 verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourself. Talking to the leaders of the church, the pastors. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. To do what? To feed the church of God. So the church of God must be fed by the shepherds. Which he purchased with his own blood. So the church is not for any man. I keep telling the pastor, never say that. My church, you, you said... You can't build a church. He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. If it is your church, you build it and you struggle. So the church is not for any man. I am an overseer of other church. One of these days, he can change the location of the sheep. He can also change my location. He owns the church of God. It's called the church of the firstborn, not the church of Pastor Mark. Nobody has a church. You cannot save a soul. He said, he purchased men with his blood. Your blood does not qualify to purchase anyone. That's the time you have to be careful how you control people as a pastor. No, no, no. This morning, I didn't call anyone to come here. The same way I didn't call you, you can leave and never return. So be careful how you try to control and manipulate people. Because one of these days, your eyes will open. <laughs> which he had purchased with his own blood. Next verse. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So we have the sheep, but there are wolves who will come in between. But it's the shepherd's assignment to identify the wolf and make sure he drives them away. Okay. Now go to First Peter 5 verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Did you hear that again? Feed the flock. So the church is the flock of God because... We are the sheep of God. And he says that feed the flock of God. Taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint. But willingly. Not for filthy lack of, That is money. But of a ready mind. You don't feed people because of money. Hello. If your motivation is the money. You will do it. God won't pay you. If you are a pastor listening to me. Or a pastor in the church. Let your motivation be the love of God. Not for the money. Do we need money to run the ministry? Of course, yes. And you have to trust God for that one. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing. Don't come and be a pastor. It's like somebody is forcing you. God, you know me, I was busy and you called me home. He said, no. Do it willingly. But because you are, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Somebody with me. So you learn to feed the flock of God. The church is the sheep, the flock of God. 
Actually, when God picked up the Israelites, he saw them as sheep and he sent David to go and feed them. And the church of God is the Israel of God. Go to 2 Samuel 5 verse 2. Go to verse 1. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron. Spoke saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou was he that leaded us out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel. So when David was the leader and the king, in the mind of God, he was feeding the nation. A pastor, a leader is supposed to feed. That's the greatest assignment of a shepherd. And Psalm 17 verse 17. He chose David also his servant and took him from the sheepfold. So when David was taking care of the physical sheep, it was a training for the spiritual sheep. From following the ewes great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. And that's, there's a difference between Jacob and Israel. He said Jacob is his people. But Israel is inheritance. The Bible said, the Lord spoke a word to Jacob, but it lighted upon Israel. Talking about two spiritual things. Mm, all right. But the church of God is the Israel of God. When we get born again, you have become the Israel of God. Galatians 6 verse 15 to 16. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So in Christ Jesus, what matters is the new creation. Verse 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. It simply means that the church of God, the new creation is the new Israel of God. Has God forgotten about the earthly Israel? No. But Abraham had two lineage. God said, I will make your sea like the sun at the seashore and the stars in the skies. The sun at the seashore represent the physical one. And the stars in the sky represent the church of God, the spiritual seed of Abraham. So Abraham has, has two types of seed. The physical seed and the spiritual seed. Do you agree with me? So as members of a church, we are sheep and God is the one who is the chief shepherd. Now Jesus has three titles pertaining to his shepherdorial work. The first one is that Jesus is a good shepherd. Say good shepherd. John 10 verse 11. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So Jesus is the good shepherd. The Bible said that not only is he a good shepherd, he is a great shepherd. Hebrews 13 verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. That great shepherd of the... Oh, shout it please. That great shepherd of the... Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So, Jesus, he's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. Not only is he a good shepherd and a great shepherd, he's the chief shepherd. First Peter 5 verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. So, we just discovered that Jesus is the shepherd. Stand here, please. He is the shepherd. The good shepherd, the great shepherd, and the chief shepherd. So, as the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, the great shepherd, he is supposed to be the one to feed the sheep. Is that correct? But you discover that he does not feed directly. He has other sheep. He has made shepherd. And he will hand over the food so that they feed the people. Psalm 145 verse 15. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. The eyes of everyone, talking about the sheep, the Bible says we are his people and the flock of his pasture. So all of us, we look unto who? Jesus. He is the chief shepherd, and our feeding money should come from who? Jesus, in their due season. But the Bible says that Jesus does not feed every, anyone directly. What he does is that he gives the feed to earthly shepherds, and the earthly shepherds feed the people. Matthew 24 verse 45. Who then is a faithful and a wise servant, whom his Lord had made ruler over his household, to give them meat in their deal? Okay, so, sir, can you please come? So Jesus purchased a sheep. And this guy must be fair. And this guy is looking to Jesus to feed him. Okay? 
So look at Jesus. But the Bible just said that what he does is that he, he has servants. He calls them sheep, shepherds. And he says that, talk to this one, that feed this one. Now, this person is not feeding this one. So what happens to Jesus is that Jesus is concerned about this person. And this person is not feeding the sheep. The Bible says that if this person does not feed in judgment, then this person will face troubles. Next verse. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him doing so. What will happen? Verily I say unto him, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. So what happens is that Jesus, he hands over the meal to early shepherds. The shepherds must learn to feed. And if they are not feeding, Jesus, what you can do is that he's concerned about the sheep. He does not want the sheep to die. So what, one of the things he can do is that he can change the location of the sheep. Because he has several shepherds. And this one can do the work well. If this one fails, Jesus is concerned, frustrated. Who, who can do this? Who can do this? Can you see the picture? Jeremiah 3 verse 15. Never forget this. I'm going to tell you something. So, this is the shepherding system of God. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. The word pastors is shepherd. NIV. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart. Who will lead you with what? Knowledge and understanding. So, we have the one great chief good shepherd. But under his domain is the shepherd. Say the shepherds. All right. Now, join your hands. And Jesus, John, put your hand here. Now, can you see the shepherding system of heaven? The shepherding system of heaven has two levels or two tiers. The chief shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, he picks other shepherds, and the shepherds must do the feeding with knowledge and understanding. Come here, please. And the shepherds must do the feeding with knowledge and understanding. So when you read your Bible and you talk, the Bible talks about that Jesus is a shepherd or God is a shepherd. Don't just think about this one. Think about the system because a shepherd is a system. Clap for Jesus. All right. Now, if you get this picture, I'm going to let them sit down. If you get this picture, I want to explain to you Psalm 23 verse 1. Clap for Jesus. Take your seat. And by that, you see the signs of spiritual growth. Because the shepherd is responsible for the growth of the sheep. So, Psalm 23 verse, the, the ninth chapter, it talks about spiritual growth. And you have to look at at least eight things. If you see them, you are growing. If you don't see them, you are not growing. Are we on the same page? So, let's go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Next verse. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup ran it over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He was talking about spiritual growth. Go to verse 1 now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But look at verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So what the shepherd does is two things. You feed with the knowledge, the right diet. And the still waters is the tongues, the Holy Spirit. So the verse 2 says that he maketh me to lie down in green pastures is the feeding part. Ezekiel 34 verse 15. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to do what? Lie down. Say lie down. Say the Lord God. That was the verse he was making reference to in Psalm 23 verse 2. He maketh me to lie down. So that expression to lie down, he's talking about feeding the flock. There's a principle in the Bible I just want to show you. Go to Isaiah 34 verse 16. He said, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. The Bible is the book of the Lord. There's a system is written. And read, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. Every verse of the Bible has the mate in the Bible. You just have to find it. I repeat. Every verse of the Bible, it has a mate. 
where the explanation makes a symbol for you and your duty is by the Spirit of God to locate it. So he said in Isaiah 28 verse 10, he said that precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. The Bible, you cannot find every truth in one page. He will put a little in Psalms and a little in Ezekiel. A little in Jeremiah, a little in Luke. And it's your duty to locate all the letters and find a big picture. So when he spoke to us in Ezekiel 34 verse 15, he said that, I will feed the flock and cause them to lie down. The other letter was in Psalm 23 verse 2. Are you on the same page? So Psalm 23 verse 2 now. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now the moment you read, he leadeth me beside the still waters. By the spirit of God, he will show you where the letter is. So that you understand what is still waters. Number one, he leadeth you. Who will lead you? The Holy Ghost. Because in Romans 8 verse 14, what did he say? As many as are led by the spirit, they are the heels of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit. In the scriptures, it's the Holy Ghost who leads. So when in Psalm 23 verse 2, he said that he will make me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me by understanding you know that he's talking about the leading of the Spirit. Where? Beside the still waters. The waters, talk about the waters of the Spirit. In John 7 verse 37, the Bible said, In the last day and the great day of the feast, Jesus said, Anyone who hunger and thirst should come to me. For out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living waters. So Psalm 23 verse 2 actually is the first verse in Psalm 23. <laughs> Go back there. Now look at me. When you read, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. He's talking about what the shepherd will do. So the Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd will feed me with green pastures. And he will give me the waters of the spirit. When he has done this for me, I will grow. And these are the signs which will follow me as I grow. I repeat. Because I'm going to talk about the signs in a moment. The Lord is my shepherd. What will the shepherd do? He will feed me with green pastures, knowledge and understanding. He will give me the waters of the spirit. When you speak in tongues, you generate the spirit. I told you that. Then if he gives me these two, I'm supposed to grow. And when I grow, what will be the signs? Okay. I'm going to tell you the signs right now. But just to prove my point that the Bible is here a little, there a little. Look at, he, the whole of Psalm 23 is in one verse. In Jeremiah 23 verse 4. I will set up shepherds. Did you see shepherds there? Oh, shout it. Can you see shepherds there? Can you see shepherds in Psalm 23? So he said, I will shepherd shepherds. You know, Psalm 23 said one shepherd. But by revelation, you know that it is not one shepherd he was talking about. He was talking about the chief shepherd, the great shepherd, the good shepherd, and his other shepherds. So when he says that, I will set up shepherds over them. We shall do what? So talk about feeding. And what will happen? They shall fear no more. You will see it in a moment. No, they will be dismayed or discouraged. You find out. Neither shall they be what? Lacking. Now go to verse 1. Psalm 23 verse 1. If the Lord is your shepherd, the first sign of growth, he said that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Did you see that? He said that they shall not be lacking. Okay. So Psalm 23 just breaks up Jeremiah 23 verse 4. Hello. So the first sign of growth is that you have provision. Write it down. Pro, say provision. If the Lord is your shepherd, I shall not want. Right now, you have to learn that if as I grow, I must be provided for by the shepherd. Now, the provision is in different dimensions. One of them is wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, he should ask of God, the shepherd. So when the Lord is your shepherd, you should have access to the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, the understanding of God. Number two, you have to have access to the things you lack in your life. So you should be 
looking at the things you want and the things you lack and say that the Lord be my shepherd, these things must be provided for. If you are in college and you don't have money and after school you get a job which pays you $200,000, don't you think your life will change? Because somebody is paying you $200,000 to change your life. And the moment you see that I used to lack a car. I used to lack this one. But things are coming to me. You can see that you are making progress. You are growing. So, as you walk with the shepherd, you must recognize and demand that lack ceases from your life. I repeat. As you walk with the shepherd, lack and want must leave your life. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It is not just the prayer of David. It is the prayer of every sheep. And you are the sheep of God. We are the flock of God. So you look at that. That as you walk with the shepherd. Your wisdom should be growing. Your love should be growing. Don't say that. I lack love. You are not walking with the shepherd in that dimension. I lack the spirit of forgiveness. You, you must get it from the shepherd. I lack the ability to pray. You must increase in the ability to pray. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now verse 3. He restored my soul. If the Lord is your shepherd. And you are given to the shepherdorial work of the great shepherd. The, great, the chief shepherd. The good shepherd with his shepherd. What will happen is that the next attention he gives you is your soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm sure by now you know the use of the colon and the semicolon. When he puts the colon there, he's telling you what he means by he restored my soul. If the Lord is your shepherd and you are growing, there must be transformation in your soul. There must be renewal and revival in your soul. I repeat. And if there's a renewal and a revival in your soul, he will lead you in path of righteousness. Your soul is made up of three parts. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. If the Lord is your shepherd, we must see a change in your mindset, your mentality. We must see a change in your emotions. We must see a change in your will, the things you like and you choose. Now look at how he put the first verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You can be walking with God. He's your shepherd. He will give you a testimony. He will give you a job. He will give you marriage. It does not mean your soul has changed. I repeat. Some people walk with God. Their lives are changing because God is blessing them. But there's a problem in their soul. They will have to grow in the dimension where their mindset changes. Their emotions changes. And their choices change. If the things you used to like 10 years ago is the same things you like right now. All things being equal. There's a problem. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. Great change since I met God. Great change since I met God. Great change since I met God. There's a great change since I met God. Since I met God, great change. Since I met God, great change. Since I met God, there's a great change. Since I met God, it's a sign that you are growing. Before you met God, you used to say, "Foolish boy, foolish boy." Ten years, you are still insulting people. You have not changed. You are not growing. Before you met God, you have five boyfriends. After meeting God, you are getting miracles. You still have five boyfriends. You have no change. Uh, is this not part of the Bible? You have three girlfriends. The ladies are saying, what about the men? You have three girlfriends before you met God. You still have three girlfriends. You have no change. There's a problem in your soul. But one of the signs of growth is that your soul must be restored. Your mind must change. There must be a renewal. Before you met God, you were emotional. You can't take anything. Ah, if you, were, you had five and a half people you were not talking to. You got born again. They have increased to 20. No, no. You are, you are retrogressing. There must be a transformation. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And your mind is in your, in your soul.
your soul. So, one of the signs of growth, number two, is that your soul must be restored. And what? When will we know? Because we can't see your soul. The only way we see your soul is that he leads you in righteousness for his name's sake. You must walk in practical righteousness. Yes, you have the seed of righteousness in you. But we might see the signs of practical righteousness. The signs of practical holiness. We should see you and say that this lady is holy. This man is holy. The way you talk, we must see that you are a Christian. Lo and behold. Oh, I'm a Christian. It's in my heart. It's all about the heart. If it's in the heart, it will show through your mouth. It will show through your actions. I thought I would get a better clapping here. I want a good clapping here. I want it here, not when. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's not good enough that the Lord is my shepherd. See how He has blessed me. What's the song? See what you've done for me. Don't sing the song. Don't sing it. See, God has blessed me. Hundred percent is a sign of growth. But the second one is that something must happen in your soul. Your appetite should change for holy things, for righteous things. Your soul must be restored. Your mindset should be different. Your, your, what you want, what you want advanced must be kingdom. He says that, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What are the things you seek? When it's not God, hey, when it's God, there's a problem with your appetite. Hello? Can we continue? Next verse. So the first one is the lack. Number two, he said that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The third thing is that if you are growing, your fear level should be decreasing. As you walk with God, your fear level should be decreasing. If your fear level is increasing, there's a problem. You are not growing. Jeremiah 23 verse 4, I told you the same thing he said there. Jeremiah 23 verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear shout it. And they shall fear. I told you, when the shepherd is there and he's feeding you, the sign of growth is that your fear level should change. And what should happen? Your faith level should rise. Suddenly they should call you a man of faith and a woman of faith. You should not say, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid I won't get a job. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Now they call you sister fear, brother fear, uncle fear. No! If you are growing, your fear should go down. Why? Because one of the signs that you are growing that you know that thou art with me. Thou art with me. The more I grow, I know who is with me, who is not for me. I know my rights, I know my privileges, I know my responsibilities. And one of them is that thou art with me. If thou art with me, then I fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Let me say this. The fact that you are growing does not mean that you will not go through the valley of the shadow of death. Because many people think that the way now I pray, I go to church, I fast. I should not hear any bad news. No, a thousand times no. Although you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. It will be a sign to your enemies, your family, telling you that, ha, ah, this lady, he used to be afraid and anxious about everything. But the same thing which he used to run away from, suddenly he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strong God of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? You used to be afraid of a cockroach and a snake. As you are growing, at least drop the, the, the cockroach. You can maintain the snake, but there must be a chain. <laughs> Clap for Jesus. Your fear must be reducing. Some say, I fear the unknown. I fear the future. What is in the future? You don't know. So why are you afraid? But the more you grow, you, you discover that he has set a future for me. I know the plans I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Suddenly, your eyes, your vision changes. You are not afraid of the future again. What do you see? I don't see anything, but come what may. The Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. I just know I will make it. I can't tell you how, but I know I will make it. I know I will survive this. I know. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I, I will make it. I will, I'm coming out better and strong. They try to comfort you and say that, oh, please, God will do it. No, 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 my God has done it for me. Although he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I'm coming out better and stronger. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? It's a sign that you are growing. Christ Palace International Ministries.